what is up YouTube it's Ubu the tech guru coming straight at you how is everybody doing today I'm doing fan tiddlyastic and today is Tuesday you know what that means tech Tuesday with Ubu and yes I know it's been a few weeks or <laughs> a lot of weeks since I've done an episode of tech Tuesday with Ubu but I wanted to get back to it and provide you guys hopefully some uh, helpful information regarding being DDoS deny uh, distributed denial of service attack and um, there's a picture on the screen that kind of shows the basic premise of what occurs when someone does DDoS you it just involves you know a, a, a whole slew of other computers basically all trying to access your router at once which floods it and then makes it uh, basically crash the router and uh, you, you know you can't really surf the internet while you're being DDoS you can't really do anything and unfortunately until you get a new well until either they stop DDoSing you or until you get a new external IP address you're pretty much SOL um, most consumers get a dynamically assigned IP address from your ISP your internet service provider so um, you know it, that means that it can change you know whenever it wants it's not a static IP and um, as you can see over here at portforward.com it shows me what my external IP address is now I've obviously uh, grayed out the beginning of the IP range so you can only see a few of the numbers but um, that's my current external IP so if an attacker knows that IP whether they got it from you know there's a Skype exploit or maybe they got it because they were um, you know in a in a Call of Duty lobby with me and they used um, I forget what the software is called Kane enable or something and they use that to figure out my IP address um, you know once they have that external IP and uh, <clears throat> they want to attack me they're able to DDoS that external IP now you know like I said until you get a new external IP or until they stop you're pretty much SOL you can't really do much online you know because you're just your routers being flooded with so much traffic it can't um, do anything that you're trying to tell it to do so there is a solution um, you know you could try to unplug your your modem and your router um, you know for for quite a long time it could take you know anywhere from 24 hours to who knows how long to get a new IP address from your ISP but just unplugging your modem and waiting and then plugging it back in is not a guarantee that you're going to get a new external IP from your ISP so I'm going to show you how to um, make sure that your your modem gets a new external IP so that your you know your attackers do not know um, how who to attack anymore obviously that's only until they figure out your new IP you know so if they found out your IP through Skype I would strongly suggest you know not using that Skype anymore um, or you know and if they found it out through you know within a Call of Duty lobby I don't really know what to suggest because you know you can't really play online multiplayers through a VPN or anything like that you know it's just I don't think it provides enough bandwidth to be able to play a multiplayer game uh, through a VPN um, you know so I guess I'm not really sure this is just basically a tutorial to show you how to get a new external IP so first thing you are going to do is figure out how to log into your um, router now you need to be able to log into the router's administration web server that's usually built in to um, do the this, these tutorial steps that I'm about to show you. Um, so this is assuming that you have a modem provided from your internet service provider, and then after the modem you have a router. Um, you know, if you just have a modem, um, there may be a way to you know uh, kind of modify these steps to do the same thing but I'm not totally certain on that so this is just going to cover if you have you know a basic home consumer router um, as well as a modem so the first thing you want to need to do is to figure out what your uh, routers IP address is so that you can log into its web server so um, you can go to portforward.com and they have a lot of great tips um, so you can see here on the screen it says how to find out your router IP address 
And um, for those of you that don't know, your router's IP or your router has two IP addresses: one which is external, which is how it communicates with the internet, and then one which is internal, which is how it communicates with your internal um, LAN, your local area network. So. Um, one of the ways to do it within Windows is to run the IP config command. So you're going to want to, you know, uh, open up the run the run box and then type in cmd or cmd.exe, <clears throat> and then you just type in IP config and hit enter, and then you can see what it says for your default gateway. Um, another way is you can type in route space print and it will also show you your default gateway there as well. It's going to be the first jump from the computer to the router. Um, you know, or if you're in Linux, like I am, you can open up a terminal window and uh, type in, you can just type in route and um, it'll show you your routing table from your computer to the gateway. So you can see my gateway is, my router is 192.168.0.1. So once you have that, you'll now need to figure out what the credentials are to log into the router's web server. And again, we can use portforward.com. It's a great resource, it's a great website, and um, it shows you all the steps for properly port forwarding various games um, uh, you know, based on what your router's manufacturer is and what the model number is. Um, so we're just going to use it to learn what the credentials are of the router. So let's just, for example, and this is assuming that you didn't change, you know, that your father or your mother or whoever else set up your router. This is assuming that they didn't change the default username and password, which I do usually suggest that people change the default um, router password just because, um, you know, it, if people are war driving and driving by your house and they see your network and it's not secure, they would technically be able to use the default uh, credentials to log in and do whatever they wanted within the web server of the, the router's configuration pages. But anyway, so um, this is assuming that you, you, know, you have the default username and password. So here on the left, you would choose your router brand. So let's just use uh, D-Link just because that's what I have. And then the model, I have the DIR615, I think. So you'll need to figure out which, um, you know, if you have version 1, 2, or 3, uh, which, you know, exact router model you have. And that's usually listed on the router. And actually, um, the, the router's IP address oftentimes is right on the router as well. So if, you know, if you, um, you want to just look at the router, it may have its default IP right on it. So here we would just hit search close this advertisement and you can see here it's telling me that um, so here they have a tool that you can download and use we're not going to do that we're just going to look at the default guide for this router I clicked on default guide and then here it shows you um, how to log on to the web server of the of your router and right there it says the default uh, password and username is admin and the default password is blank so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna log into our router so once you figured out the IP address and the credentials the way that you get to it is simply by typing in the IP address of your router so mine is 192.168.0.1 I type it in and then the username um, it's set on that page it's admin and then the password is blank but obviously I've changed mine so I enter in the password that I made it so I hit login and now I'm logged into my routers configuration settings and here you can see again uh, the IP address that's listed just like it showed on the port forward uh, website this is the external IP that we need to get changed so that we cannot get DDoS attacked anymore and the and the way that we do that is we change the uh, the MAC address, which is this address right here, it's like a hardware, you know, it's like a hardware identifier for the uh, the port that's uh, on the, the Ethernet card. So we need to change that so that it looks like to the ISP, the Internet Service Provider, that we have a new device and then it will give us a new IP address. So you're probably wondering, well, what what MAC address do I use? 
Well, you can use pretty much any MAC address that you have um, you know, inside your internal network. So the way to figure out what MAC address you can use is um, you're going to want to get to your like status page or um, basically where it shows what all the devices are that are connected to your router. So mine, I'm already on the status page, so I just scroll all the way to the bottom and I can see the various um, computers and devices that are connected to the router. So you see all these MAC addresses over here on the left. So um, I'm just going to basically pick one. So I'm going to pick this MAC address right here. I'm going to copy it. And then within, um, then we're going to go to uh, the setup. Because like I said, you want to change the, the, uh, the router's MAC address, what it looks like to the modem and to the internet service provider. That way they know to provide you a new IP address. So here we go. Um, my, this is the way that my D-Link DIR655 looks like. So uh, we just do manual internet connection setup. Uh, my internet connection is DHCP, like I said, dynamically assigned. And down here, it's, see, it says MAC address. You can choose to clone your PC's MAC address, or you can enter in your own. So I'm just going to paste the MAC address that I had. And then up here, I'm going to hit save. And it's going to tell me I need to reboot because we're basically like faking the router having a different MAC address. So I'm going to hit reboot now. Now, once the router is all rebooted, um, you can refresh on portforward.com and you can clearly see that I now have a new external um, IP address. So now the DDoS uh, you know, attackers that were attacking you are now they're attacking that old IP address and it's not you. So therefore now you're free to surf the internet and do whatever you want. So, you know, that was it. That was that easy. Um, you know, and if you end up getting attacked again, then you simply do it again. Change your internal, your MAC address on your router, which will then force your ISP to give you a new IP address. So that's it. Hopefully you guys found this tutorial helpful. Uh, please leave me a rating, you know, a like or a dislike, and leave me any comments that you guys think might be pertinent to the video. I would greatly appreciate that. And until next time, I will see you the next Tech Tuesdays with Ubu. Ubu out.